Many thanks to the conference organizers for inviting me to speak today. I come to you from the perspective of an oncologist and a clinical researcher who spent many years in academia and who now works in the world of health tech. In the next 10 minutes, I'll try to convince you that these two spheres may be brought together to help overcome some traditional barriers to conducting research wherever patient care is delivered. My focus will be on how information in electronic health records and platforms that link practices through their EHR can serve as the basis for research. Clinical trials remain the gold standard, but we have some challenges. Current clinical trials infrastructure is cumbersome, costly, and inefficient. It is well known that patients must often travel to participate in research, which provides logistical barriers. Traditional clinical trials may be infeasible for rare populations. And patients in clinical trials are often not representative of the overall patient population. They tend to be older, they tend to be, have more comorbidities, and they tend to be less diverse in a racial and ethnic uh, background than the general population. And finally, historically, real world data sources have been most appropriate for hypothesis generation only. So how can we involve more patients and more representative patients in research. A solution I'd like to offer today is EHR-based platforms for the integration of research and practice. Why is more, more attention being focused on the opportunity afforded by the rich data captured every day during routine care, so-called real-world data? First of all, the HITECH Act incentivized the adoption of electronic health records such that nearly every cancer patient's journey is now chronicled in an EHR. Second, we're simply experiencing an explosion in demand for high quality evidence, not only due to unmet needs of cancer patients, but also an acceleration in development of new science and new therapeutics. In addition, Recent current events have highlighted the need for real-time access to health information at the population level, and EHRs are an obvious source. Finally, the FDA's interest, mandate, and thought leadership in the application of real-world data to regulatory decision-making has shined a light on this potential. As one example, Flatiron has created a platform based on a nationwide network of EHRs in community and academic practices, which allows for the curation and de-identification of both structured and unstructured clinical data in near real time. As shown here, these de-identified data may then be used to address observational research questions, such as patterns of adoption of PD-1 inhibitors in patients with non-small cell lung cancer, shown on the panel on the left, and the association of patient clinical outcomes with biomarkers, such as pdl one expression shown on the right. And on the left-hand panel, you can see that over time, the use of checkpoint inhibitors has moved into earlier lines of therapy. And on the right, patient outcomes are superior, in this case, measured as real-world progression-free survival uh, uh, in, among patients uh, with higher expression of pdl one but a curation platform like this may also be applied in the context of clinical trials. This figure is intended to show how a real world data platform could contribute to clinical trials from development through execution. So for example, real world data could be used to help select a control arm or eligibility criteria in the design and the assessment of feasibility for clinical trials. They could be used to determine uh, help power uh, a study uh, based on the expected outcome in a control arm for a clinical trial. They can be used to help select sites based on patient populations at those sites and could be used for patient, patient matching algorithms during the ascertainment process. Finally, centralized data capture, monitoring, and follow-up is possible with an electronic health record-based platform. To highlight with an example, Kirshner and colleagues recently presented at the annual ASCO meeting, the integration of machine learning algorithm to identify patients with metastatic disease, 
A variable not typically available is structured data in electronic health records to support a point of care clinical trial matching application. And as you can see here, the sensitivity and specificity um, of this algorithm were quite high. As another example of the power of real-time assessment, Perique and colleagues explored the impact of FDA label restriction on the use of checkpoint inhibitors and biomarker testing in patients with metastatic bladder cancer, demonstrating rapid practice change after emerging data that suggested the inferiority of immune oncology first-line therapy in patients with low pdl one expression. These figures show rapid decrease in use of IO treatment with associated increase in chemotherapy use and biomarker testing. Now back to current events. This panel shows real-time administrative data pulled from OncoEMR, Flatiron's cloud-based oncology electronic health record used by community oncologists nationwide. This shows the rapid adoption of telemedicine early in the COVID pandemic in the United States with associated decreases in in-person visits. These data support the power of centralized data curation and the scalability of telemedicine, thus addressing some of the potential barriers to decentralized clinical trials in communities where the patients receive their care. Finally, I'd like to share an example of a prospective clinical trial now underway, presented by Lou et al. in the recent, clinical, in the recent ASCO virtual meeting. The investigators are using an electronic health record platform for patient ascertainment, as well as centralized data collection and monitoring with the collection of data that are routine aspects of clinical care, plus the addition of study specific intentional data elements, uh, such as circulating tumor DNA at pre-specified time points. Thus, the electronic health record as a research platform can bring the best of observational and retrospective research to the con conduct of prospective and interventional research. And in doing so, enable research traditionally conducted predominantly in specialized centers to occur wherever patients obtain their care. Looked at another way, Future clinical trials could leverage the routine data collection enabled by EHR-based curation platforms, supplemented by study-specific elements that would be collected prospectively and intentionally with appropriate informed consent. So what does this require? As discussed in other presentations and discussions at this forum, common data model and interoperability will help us achieve the goal of narrowing the gap between research and practice. We need transparent adherence to regulatory and ethical frameworks and intense attention to data quality standards to ensure that specific EHR-based data elements are fit for purpose. And it is worth reinforcing that success requires stakeholder collaboration, including EHR vendors, clinician researchers, regulators, and most importantly, our patients to fill critical evidence gaps in oncology. Thank you.